Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the data science series. Uh, in last uh, video, we have done the setup of all the applications, packages, libraries required for data science applications here. Now we are going to use them. In this video, we are going to see what is the application of NumPy library and what is the application of the pandas library. Based on that, we are going to perform our progress and in next video we are going to see the visualization techniques visualization of the data with the help of uh, the matplotlib library now start with the uh, first numerical python numpy uh, is a short form of this numerical python we install the library inside it what's application that we'll see so it's a python package done for numerical python and uh, developed by jim hoguin Union, another package that is numarray was developed having some additional uh, packages here. So, this library is consisting of multidimensional array object and collection of routines for processing of array. Okay, so remember this concept array. Okay, if you learn Python programming language, you might have heard about this. Array is not a data structure in Python. Python contains uh, tuple, then list, then dictionary, and set. These are the common data types. But there is no any data structure in Python which is having only which is compulsory to have same kind of the data only. So, but the concept of array is having that. So, in order to create the array, we require the NumPy package. And in data science, most of the time we require the data to be in the array format. That's why we require the NumPy package here. Okay, so these operations are done by using NumPy. Mathematical and logical operations on arrays, Fourier transform, routines for manipulations. Relational, uh, uh, sorry, operation related to linear algebra as well as built in function for random number generations. Okay, they are possible with this. So, replacement to the MATLAB, many operations that we can do with uh, this. Now, let us go for actual practical applications. The prime applications of using NumPy is to use the array and uh, perform the array operations onto it. Now, how to do? How to use the arrays? That we will see. I am just closing this presentation. Okay, so and now. I will open my terminal and open my Jupyter notebook. Okay, so I am on Linux. So I will open the Jupyter notebook, Jupyter notebook by this method. Uh, if you are on Windows, so open your navigator and uh, then perform the Jupyter notebook operations here. Okay, now this is the ID, this is what Jupyter notebook will show you, uh, something like this. Okay, uh, it is open in my home directory. So, wherever I open my current working directory and its folders and files will be shown on the front. Okay. Now, uh, if I want to create an application, so remember, Jupyter Notebook is opened by using my default web browser. Okay. It does not have its own ID. That's why it is lightweight. It's using the ID applications, ID design from your web browser. That's why it's lightweight. Okay. So, let's start writing a Java program, sorry, Python program here. So, I'll go here, Python 3. You can see new python 3 and the window uh, something like will be created will be opened so let's, okay let's see now single line so this id allows single line execution here now let's see i want to run a python program so i'll write this single cell this is called as a cell in single cell i can write single statement or multiple statements are also possible see print and hello world now after that uh, i will print i will enter the shift enter shift and enter so when i press shift enter uh, this line will get executed and i'll be available with a new line to write the next statements inside it or one more way you can write uh, use this particular option this particular button to run the current line also okay so line by line execution is possible using this jupyter notebook here if i want multiple lines i can go ahead here again print now goodbye okay and then shift enter okay so executed so one more time i can write in this way see so this is how it's possible see so in this way by pressing shift enter that single line of execution will be done and we can immediately see the output here on the screen okay so this is the method by which you uh, use the Jupyter notebook and immediately your output will be generated on your screen. Okay. Now, uh, you can see multiple options present over here. In file menu, uh, this file is saved in default directory, your current working directory, remember. 
I want to save this. It's always in auto saving mode. I just want to change this file name. Hello. Okay. So hello. This file will be saved in current working directory by extension. See, this is extension. Hello. Dot ipynb. Ipython notebook. This is the extension that it has, and this file can be opened by using Jupyter notebook only, not by text editor or any other software. Okay. It's saved in current working directory. Now. If I want this file to be download as, see Python file, I can download Python HTML format, or if you want that in PDF format, or if you want in text format, okay. So in this way, I can download it. This is common file ipyvnb, and along with that, only Python statement if I want. So we can use this method, this particular option, HTML file from this, and all other files are also available. Okay, so this is possible. Now. These are the multiple options that I can use. See the first option, which is given as save and checkpoint. Because uh, see, uh, by default, uh, the editor is always in the auto saving mode, so we don't require to use this. Or if you press Control S, a checkpoint will be created, and the file will be saved. This is how you add the extra cell. This is how you cut the cell. This is you paste the cell. Okay, so in this way, you can perform uh, the operation. This is used to move up and down, run it, stop it, restart it. Okay, so these options we can make use of. From here also, okay. So always this is auto save mode. This is file. Uh, remember, if you don't give the file name here, untitled file name will be appearing, and any number of files can be created like this. Means I I want to create one more file. Go to home, and here again create new Python three file. So in this way you can run it, and which file is currently running will be shown in the green color here. You just can check. See, this is green color. Okay, and if you want to stop this file, I'll go here and uh, in running option. And shut down. Then only this file will be closed. Okay, so I'll go to my file again. Hello, here. So in this way, uh, the Jupyter notebook can be used to perform any operations here in uh, the Python. It's so very popularly used for data analysis operations. Okay, so uh, we have came across the first point of uh, the numerical Python. What do you mean by the numerical Python? So basically, uh, almost all the packages. In the Python, are created or are given one alternative name to them. Alternative name means alias, as import as. So NumPy is a five character name. It's termed as NP. Pandas is given as PD. Matplotlib is given as PLT. Okay, so these are the common names that data scientists uses to import these particular packages in your systems. So now let's see the first. I'll I've created the program already. I'll explain it. So. So it's there in the home directory. See numerical Python. Okay. Now how to use it? That uh, we'll see. Now here I have imported the NumPy. Import NumPy as NP. So NP is the alternative name given to this particular package. Okay. And after this, I want to create the arrays. So array is created by this method. NP dot array. And inside it, a list of elements are mentioned. You can see five, seven, eight, two, three, nine, zero. Okay, so let's run this. This is executed. So data is created. And if I print it on the screen, see by using the square bracket separator, this will be printed. But make sure that this is not the list. Uh, the output will show you these values are not comma separated. These values are space separated. Okay, so the spaces are present there. And if you see the type of this particular data. This is numpy dot nd array. Nd array stands for n dimension arrays. So currently we have only single dimension to it. And if you want to see that dimensions, we can make use of this. See, data dot shape. Okay. See, seven uh, number of elements are there inside it, but second dimension is not present. Only single dimension available. Total number of elements that it contains. Okay. And now I want to replace the contained. I can make use of this particular method. Check this. Data of three equal to Seven, and if I print it, the third element has become seven here. Means it is uh, mutable. We can change the contents. Most of the methods that list an array contains, they are almost same. Okay, only the difference is that array is having same data type element compulsorily. How? Let's see. So in this statement, what I have done? Five, seven, eight point six. So here, all remaining elements are in integer, and this eight point six is in floating point format. And now, after that, if you print this array, see this, all other elements are also converted to floating point format. If you see data of zero in this case, it is 
showing 5.0 okay so remaining values are also converted into the floating point format because will not incur any kind of data loss for this case so it is compulsory all data should be in the same format one floating point has made the complete array in the floating point format that's what the property that it contains it is not the case for the uh, list element now what i have done here here i am making one element as h that is string so what will happen now see if i print it all other also have become string say this 5 7 h 2 3 9 and 0 so every one has become the string okay and if you don't use the print it will show the data type also unicode 21 say this one data unicode is a character uh, data type uh, string data type basically which is shown over here data type okay now one more concept if i made here true true is a boolean value and printed so let's see this so it contains one here true means one if you write false it will be zero so that boolean value is also converted in the form of the numerical elements okay that's what the property that array are containing here now if you want to use the methods of the array just like max see max data dot max so maximum element maximum element from that array is printed on the screen and that element is eight here okay so that element is eight here and uh, if i want to use some methods from the numpy so i've given the np name to it here when you start working in it np so what i've done here see a range okay a range a range is just like range function but written the output of a range is the array not the list and for the range it is the list okay so let's check this out np dot a range okay and 1 to 10 it's using from 1 to 10 fine and all these elements from 1 to 10 are printed on the screen okay fine and one more uh, function i'm showing here lin space linearly space elements okay so many such functions are present out of that one i have shown here np dot lin space from 1 to 9 i want 10 element linearly spaced 10 elements so it means that uh, 10 elements will be generated between 1 to 9 and their difference is same the difference is same so if you change this i want 1 to 10 and uh, the difference is 10 okay sorry uh, 10 elements I, I i want in that 1 to 10 so linearly spaced 10 elements are created now if i want linearly spaced 15 elements within this range see first number is 1 second number is 1.64 then 2.28 2.92 like so array operation functions are available in this particular package okay so many more functions are also available but uh, in this particular uh, practical i will not show you i will show you these applications when we came across when we come across this particular point again in one of the practicals so this is the common application that uh, the numpy is required for our data science systems currently okay so i have created the second part of this particular video which will show you the applications of the next package that is pandas for data analysis operations okay so we'll just practice that we'll continue with the next video thank you thanks a lot